Thank you for tuning in to Belmont Buzz. I'm your host, Joanna Juvelis. I hope you all enjoy that opening as much as I enjoyed making it with producer Jeremy Meserve. Let me tell you, I really do feel like a bee buzzing around this town getting all the news. Um, today's buzz that we're going to talk about is the Belmont Women's Club, which is celebrating its centennial year in 2020. And today's guests are co-presidents of the Belmont Women's Club. We have with us Wendy Murphy, who is an attorney. I have a, a little, a, a whole thing written here about you, Wendy. <laughs> uh, she's an attorney specializing in the representation of abused women and children. And she's an impact litigator in state and federal court. She's also a professor of New England law. She's an author. You left that out, but she is an author of the book and Justice for Some. Yes, I am. Thank you. And mm -hmm. Maria is a realtor. She's been a realtor for over 30 years. And I still find that hard to believe. What were you a kid when you became a realtor? <laughs> Thank you. And you're with Real Estate Advisors Group. But they are both here to talk about the Belmont Women's Club. They're both co-presidents. And I think we're going to start by one of you telling us about the Belmont Women's Club for anyone watching who doesn't know what it is. What is its mission? I think I have to defer to Wendy. I'd like to say that I am uh, president, co-president new this year, so I do not have the <laughs> history, having only been on the Women's Club for a few years, that Wendy does. Wendy, and I how just many feel years has it been for you? You know, I lost count, but it's more than five. Yes. Yep. More than five. And, and I know um, a lot's changed since she became president, but let's, let's just, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Let's just yeah. talk about the yeah. actual mission for anyone who, like, what is the Belmont Women's Club? A yeah. Bunch and, of, and a bunch of women just getting together for social events? <laughs> No. no. <laughs> and I, I think um, Maria is understating her role. Um, she certainly knows our mission can say much more, but she's being <laughs> modest. Um, we have been a club for 100 years, coming up on 100 years. Okay. And the way to describe our mission, I think, is really the same as it was 100 years ago, although certainly a lot of things have changed. We get together um, partly socially, but almost in, most of the time, I should say. It's, it's for purposes related to education philanthropy, um, community service. I mean, we are called the Belmont Women's Club, but we, of course, welcome all people. We have male members, we have men on the board, mm -hmm. and we're open even to people outside of Belmont. That wasn't always true. The Belmont Women's Club was, at one point in time, not only open only to women, but you had to be married. <laughs> I think you had to be Irish at some point. I would have qualified. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, um, I think the misunderstanding is that, that there's this mysterious hill a house up on the hill, and women are up there perhaps playing mahjong or doing having tea, mm -hmm. um, and we don't do either of that. Well, once, a while, once in a while we do have tea, but, but we are almost always organizing some activity that's right. coming up, gathering clothes for the homeless. We work with an organization called helpus.org. Yes. They are wonderful, and we gather things for them year-round. Um, so we're always doing something oriented toward helping the community, right, um, right. and some of what we do is socializing with each other, which is wonderful. But the main mission, correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm also a member of the Belmont Women's Club, the main mission and the reason it was established was for the William Flagg Homer House. Yes, well, that's, so a slightly, it, a slightly right? different question is, what do we raise money for? I mean, I, yeah. I think our purpose, we but have all these purposes. you are technically the owners of the home. Yes, It is yes. your responsibility as the Belmont Women's Club to 
maintain that home. Yeah, we, it's a when, big responsibility. It's huge. It's a huge house and a huge responsibility. We purchased the house in 1927 because we needed a place to get together. They, the women originally met at each other's yes, homes. But it was also in danger of getting torn down. That's right. I still can't believe that. And that, that's a critically important piece because a developer had already agreed to purchase the house for $25,000. The town was not happy because he was going to tear it down and build seven house lots on the land. So there was that. a bit of a conspiracy between the town and the women's club to kick him out. How and big is that lot at 661 Pleasant Street? Oh my well, goodness, you should, I, sh I should know that, uh, but because... You can actually it, put seven houses on that lot? The, the land itself might have been bigger before. Um, it's certainly mm -hmm. big enough for a few house lots right, now, right. but I think it was bigger even before. Really? We, um, you know, we did rescue the house, I think that's fair to say, by purchasing it, and then you know, people think, well, we, we knew it was an historically relevant and significant property back then uh, because of its ties to Winslow Homer and so forth. I'm not sure that was why they purchased it. A lot of women's clubs around the country were buying big-ish houses back then because they oh, needed the space that. to gather. And the, the houses they were purchasing were older, and, and as was the William Flagg Homer house. So that made it more affordable. And of course, women could buy property by 1927, um, but it was new, kind of new for women to be able to own property right. in Massachusetts. That was a big deal back then. So we had to, but we, so we had the ability to own property, but we didn't necessarily have individual money. You know, women, mm -hmm. women had, for the most part, um, small jobs, if any, outside the home, but they were mostly married, living at home, and their husbands were earning it. So they didn't have cash to buy a house, but these women came together and sort of pooled their money, they did. came up with a down payment, got two mortgages to purchase the house, and literally saved it from destruction. I feel like Wendy was there when she tells this. <laughs> huh. Now, it's been a hundred years, so in that hundred years of time, that the house has obviously aged, and I know that there's been a lot of work that you've already done uh, in recent years, because it needed to be done. If it wasn't done, the house couldn't even be occupied. I mean, the heat was going, right? Or we lost gone. we lost our um, heater a few I think and 3 or 4 years ago. That was a big ago. expense. Huge. It killed our budget. We had almost no money left. That's exactly wow. right. And I know you recently well what was really nice was the decorator show house that the Junior League of Boston had and that really gave it a nice new look. Anyone who hasn't been there recently should really go check it out. It's it's incredible what they did to that house because not only did they like fix, you know, walls that were, you know, falling apart <laughs> with new paints or wallpaper and uh, tile, the kitchen's brand new. I I'm really impressed. So if anyone wants to have an event there, it's totally event ready. It was it a even fashionable has... home in its day and it, it really is today again yeah. after that but, but there's also a new bathroom that the club put in very mm -hmm. recently and it's handicap accessible. That was a big priority for us to make sure we had a handicapped accessible bathroom um, so that anyone who does rent the house would be able right. to have people but, with wheelchairs there. Yeah. That was a big decision But you still have work part. to do and the, the handicap accessibility thing is a big thing. It, I don't even think, so you've got the handicapped bathroom but the house itself how do you get in as a handicapped person? Well, we don't have a, uh, an installed handicap ramp, but you could, if you were to rent the house, bring a portable ramp. There's okay. an opportunity and a but, space to do that. But right. at some point, we do want that to make it project, handicap right? accessible because we're open to the public. We give tours to the public. We are often having public events. Like in the summer, yeah. we have Literacy on the Lawn, which is free for all the kids in town. They can come, and um, Iris Ponte does an amazing job I just getting get over getting so much events. together for the yeah. kids or, or and when they, and we work with the library and we have these I kind of joint that. collaborative efforts um, and we want the house to be accessible to everyone but yeah. it happens to be of an era where handicapped accessibility I mean they, I don't even think they had electricity and running water when the house was built so we've obviously right. had to make many changes over the past hundred years um, and now it's very close to being handicap accessible for all, but again, we have to, at some point in the near future, put in um, a, a, a final ramp, you know, a ramp that's there permanently, and I think that's going to cost a lot of money. We, we will be raising money Could for that in the future. Could you get CPA funds for that? That's a good question. Um, so I know you've applied for CPA funds, and, and very recently you have an application in that I believe is is part of the, the new applications for 2000. 20, right? Yes. Yeah. We made it past the first round. Good. And, um, what is the application? Tell, tell us about it. Do you want to talk about it? 
Do you know um, I don't. She took care of writing the grant, so I, I think it's probably best if you do. I'm sorry that. Oh, it tells how much Maria helped. How much so are you much. asking? For? Ah. Maria helped a lot. We're asking for about a hundred thousand dollars, and, and that is for what? The, 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 <laughs> the, the primary thing we have to fix now with the house that will change a lot about what's wrong with it mm -hmm. is we're going to restore all the windows. Okay. And and that's going to be not only important because the windows themselves are coming apart from the glazing. Um, in some in some cases, the windows are broken, um, and so the, the air too, they're very drafty. They are original windows. Mm -hmm. They're massive. I mean, some of them are I don't know how many feet, like six feet or eight feet tall, maybe mm -hmm. more. Yeah. Um, and so we we need to replace not replace restore almost all of them. We have 44 windows in the house. Yeah, that's, that's been a trivia question. Can anyone say how many <laughs> windows are in the I house? finally counted. Not I, I didn't count. The person who we're working with to do the restoration counted, and she sent me the number the other day. Wow. Um, so 44 project. is a lot, a lot. But it's also going to help keep our, our costs down. Because, because of the heat. Because of the heat. Cost. The house is not insulated. At some point in the future, we'd like to get it insulated. We spend about twenty-five to thirty thousand dollars a year just taking care of the house. We don't spend our money on anything else. I mean, we talked about our mission in terms of why we're together, but the real question about you know what are we doing with the money we raise from membership fees and fundraisers? All of it, every dime of it, goes to maintain and restore the house and to continue to make it available to the public. I still can't get over it. And and you have events, like if, if I want to have an event there, let's say I want to have, I don't know, my daughter's graduation there, there's a number that I call for the Belmont Women's Club mm -hmm. or I go to the website and I can email. And then what happens? Who Who's in charge of these events? It's all volunteers, isn't it? Oh, yeah. We're all volunteers. Yes. Um, I actually, uh, you will have to tell them who's... Who. <laughs> You know, as I said, we're going to get you. You have a lot to talk I about. I have today. a That's completely different here. role. Um, I, I, Wendy really has the bulk of the information <laughs> here, so I apologize. Shy, no, it's not she that. Is. The truth is, I, I, it, things change quite often and at the women's club because there are so many volunteers. And at the moment, I'm not sure who's running the rentals. I know that um, we've had discussions about, you know, who has to be there during Do the rentals. Do you ever think Juliet. you need to hire someone for that? We have tried that. That did not work for us as a no. model. We did that. We, we tried to hire an events coordinator who would get a percentage of the fee that we received. Mm -hmm. It didn't work. No. But, um, but that's okay. We've got good people who always step up. No matter what happens, somebody that's steps always. up. That's why Maria's being so modest. She always <laughs> steps up. No matter what. I, 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 Maria, we, you, we have a crisis. Can you be there? She's always there. Are there? a lot of um, events held there? I'm not aware of like what people, you know, what events. Yeah, we just had a, we just had a, um, a birthday party. Oh, we nice. are having, uh, someone in town is renting the house in January for, I'm sorry, at the end of February for a, uh, a 1980s party. That's oh, going to be really fun. That sounds We've great. rented it popular for popular thing these days is those '80s parties. You're seeing them pop up a lot more. So Depending on your are, age, I <laughs> went to a '70s party. Do you think <laughs> that more people would rent it, and maybe the town would utilize it more if something could, could be done about that driveway? That driveway is very steep, and you have like it's kind of scary to be honest with you. I feel like I'm a cliff, on a cliff sometimes. Can something be done to make it um, safer? Like, I can know a wall that be built or something. Well, I think the grading of the property needs to change as well as possibly a wall. I know that there's, uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's it's Muzzy, correct? That's come in and give an estimate, and mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure he may be doing the work for level, leveling the area at the bottom of the driveway as you go in and go down to the towards the bottom so we can get parking spaces, more parking spaces. That's good. And we really do need to do something. You're right. I, I even recently put markers up there that with lights on them so that when we go there for meetings that you know, nobody's going over the cliff. But I haven't heard know, of that, so. though. It hasn't been in the police log that someone went over yet. So. No, no. Except for the snowplow. The snowplow damaged the edge. <laughs> Last oh, year, well, the snowplow. Well, <laughs> over the years, um, erosion from water and rain and so forth has really ruined the, yeah. the grade. It used to be a much gentler slope. But Maria's right that uh, Dante Mazzioli has offered to help us to create parking spots and Sammy Baghdadi and Andy mm -hmm. Rojas. We've had an amazing number of people in town offer to help us to get the house more accessible. And one thing, as you pointed out, Joanna, is that we, we don't have good parking there. So if you want to rent the place and you want to be able to park close by, mm -hmm. it's not easy. You can park on the, si on the street, you can park maybe in the town uh, on the weekends, but we're about to add 
at least 13 parking really? spots That's on the great. left, facing the house on the left-hand side. We're going to be working on that this fall. Um, and with o only because of the generosity of a lot of people in town. Mm -hmm. That's really That's good. a very big deal for us. Mm -hmm. The parking spots has, has been a problem. And then part of what we're going to do is removing the land, removing the trees to make it make space for the parking. Mm -hmm. They're going to take some of that dirt and fill in where the front lawn has eroded. So that, I think, will help with the grading problem. Definitely. Now, now I know the house is actually three floors, plus the cupola, right? Mm -hmm. you get those little stairs that go up to the cupola, which was recently restored and it's is gorgeous. incredible. And you can go up there, and you actually have a 360-degree view. Yes, uh, it's you gorgeous. You can see Boston, the skyline. That's incredible. But nobody really goes up there, right? And you have the first floors done. The second floor is actually done, but I don't think anybody really uses it, right? We use it. They, we, they can. We we we. As we a matter of fact, yeah, we try to I'm limit not it. Mistaken. It was bedrooms, right? Yeah. Well, <laughs> they there were the bedrooms. One particular yeah. room that has wonderful views of Boston that recently we put some furniture in, and I believe that. Uh, they've sort of made it to be like a, a bridal a bride. suite or something. Yeah, that's nice. So that they can get ready up there. And it also has beautiful views. Yeah. Yeah. And there is a third floor that's not finished, and even the decorator show house people didn't didn't even use it. I think because why? What's wrong with that? Third well, floor? it's unfinished, and it was originally the servants' quarters. The servants' quarters. Yeah. Yep. So but it's it's been storage for for yep. so many years is for us that we keep stuff up there. It? No, no plan for it. Well, we're working on. Getting a there are a lot of um, memor there's a lot of memorabilia and yeah. old records up there that we really need to go through really? before wow. there's some very interesting things. Yeah, and uh, I think that there's a plan also to have sort of a um, a show around all of the memorabilia. Oh, I'm I not that. sure if that's, that's a great idea. going to happen anytime soon. You think Jeremy soon, will be producing that? That would be great. Oh, <laughs> well, oh, you meant a show, like not a show on Belmont Media Center, but a. We'll be a glad show? to have them help us make <laughs> like it into a, a show. Check. Exactly. Um, no, it's well, an exhibit. We're going to do it as oh, an exhibit celebrating idea. our 100 I years. We're going to use artifacts that we find and sort of use it to demonstrate how things changed over the years. Because women did very different things in the beginning than what we do now, That's obviously. Amazing. They once, for, for a long time, they did um, like an arts and crafts thing. So they would get together and, and make crafty things yeah. and um, so much history in that oh, house definitely. and we try to maintain the connection to that so once in a while we'll like at, the, at our Christmas social which is coming up um, we're gonna do a craft I, I forget exactly what we're making but um, oh, I have to talk to Arlene again yeah I Arlene's remember, an amazing but... member who is so talented and she's That's you know great. we're gonna kind of I love blast idea. back to the past I think at our social Arlene was uh, in charge for a long time of um, uh, not the Belmont Chamber of Women uh, the Oh my goodness! What's the name of her? For children, um, well, it's like a welcome committee to different oh. communities, and so she has lots of crafts. I must know who ideas. She um, um, she's I, awesome. I would really I like to see that cupola, though. Like, I don't know if there's a way that people could have easier access to the cupola. So, let, let's say you're renting the house for something. You say, yeah, let's all go up to the cupola. Oh, Check out because it's there and it's so beautiful. And you know, it is beautiful, but we were told Are by. Are you afraid of danger? You know, it's a little precarious and it, it's a very narrow staircase. Yep. But we do go up. We bring people up. I can. See. I was told not too long ago that. Um, the reason the cupola was built was not so much to facilitate the views, really? um, yeah. even though that's what we all like about it now, but <laughs> it was designed to create um, almost like an air conditioning system because of the way it circu oh, helped I to circulate the that. air. Oh, that's uh, good to know. Yeah, I, I, I don't know the but details it of it, but it was do definitely done as part of the house design to keep the house cool. Now, which one of you wants to talk about whether or not the house is um, haunted? <laughs> I don't think it's haunted. Um, I know many of our members do, and Wendy might say differently. I've gone in there myself many times. But they're good spirits, right? If they are there, they're good. I have more of a problem in the basement than I do in the rest of the house. <laughs> Why is that? Um, well, I have a problem you know, in a lot of No, I'm a little, yeah. The lighting is not too bad I've now. I've been but, down there. Maria's um, very brave. She's been down alone. <laughs> I, go, I go in the house alone, and... Uh, I often think about all of the stories that I hear when I'm there, which is silly, but um, <laughs> um, yes, I think, like you said, good spirits. Haven't they filmed Wendy might say differently, movie? but... <laughs> like, didn't they recently film a movie there? Yes, we've had several uh, movies filmed there. We've been approached movie. by a Hollywood uh, filmmaker a couple different times. Really? We, didn't, we didn't get the, 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 the job. I wonder but why. 
<laughs> I know, and, and one was um, Adam Sandler's uh, ha some Halloween movie that's recently been filmed really? in Massachusetts. We I were on the list. Right. We were second on the list. I mean, we didn't Belmont's get it. on the map for filmmakers. We already know that because they filmed The Judge in Belmont. They just did Defending Jacob, so mm -hmm. there's no doubt. Oh, we're on the list, and we have different. our house listed on the uh, Massachusetts Film website oh, that's so great. that's part of how they're finding us we haven't gotten that that's going to be a big yet. news story you better fill me in on We're, that we are working on it by the way can i tell you a quick spirit story so our oh, former boy. president <laughs> that's why i said erica Turco, um who's an attorney she now lives in connecticut she's still a member and she's she's wonderful she tells a story and i have the maria thinks i believe in spirits because i've i feel them or something no i just happen mm -hmm. to think erica is a credible person she said she was in the house at one point and literally saw the image of a woman, you know, in an old-fashioned dress, and it was white, and it was hazy, and she's a hundred percent certain about what she saw. So That's I believe her. Unbelievable! How come she didn't tell me about it? I would have done a story. <laughs> oh, <laughs> she's too afraid. You can to ask tell. her. I'm but sure I do. She I think the it's possible. I believe it's possible. I don't but, know. Um, so it's it's just an amazing house. I want to talk about. Obviously, we have we're running out of time soon, so I want to get into some of the. Um, events that you have planned for this year. I know there's a big one, April 3rd. Mm -hmm. I'm actually going to be part of it and I'm very excited about it. So Maria, now you are definitely on. Tell us about this event. So we, it's called Dancing with the Stars and it's just like the popular TV show. Um, in, uh, the, in our program, it's local celebrities like you, Joanna, who are going to <laughs> oh, dance. We usually have... And Jeff. Jeff and Hansel. Jeff Hansel, yes, he's definitely a celebrity. Yeah, um, I, I didn't know if I should spoil that, but definitely Jeff Hansel. Um, <laughs> Jeff, where are you? I told you you need to dance on the set. Uh, I can't find him. So just like the popular TV show, it's a, a dancer uh, paired with a dance instructor, professional dance instructor, and um, they create a routine, something that's comfortable for them, uh, possibly music that they like or type of dance that they like that oh, they I feel passionate dancing? about. I would love that, but then Bop -bop. other people have to jump in with you if you did that. <laughs> Why not? So, <laughs> that would be fun. Um, and then they're judged in uh, competition with each other. The 10 or possibly 12, we'll see what happens if we can arrange for 12 yes. this year. It's a big uh, fundraiser, right? The, last yes. year it raised a lot of money. Just, this will be the second year. Yeah, and my last... goal is 25000 That's what oh, I'm that's so hoping for. We sold out last year very I quickly. I you did. We'll sell out I this, it was this year as well, I'm positive, because the buzz has been around Belmont now after the event. I think it was a wonderful event. It was a good community building event. The Belmont Women's Club actually pays for the dancers' lessons, so they get eight lessons paid for by the club, and I think that... Each, each dancer. Each dancer yeah. gets eight and lessons. And there's ten altogether. Mm -hmm. Maybe you, 12. We're trying to get 12. We're trying year. to get 12. Because it, went, because it was so fun last year. More people want to do it, and we want to expand a little bit. Mm -hmm. Well, how do you top last year, though? I mean, last year, how do you top Patrice Garvin, breakdancing? Um, <laughs> who else was there? Becca Peasy, um, mm -hmm. Mark Palillo. Oh, Each, my favorite was Will Brownsberger. Ellen Kirschman. Uh, Ellen. Poker Face, Lady Gaga. They yeah. were they were awesome, Everybody and of course the winner, job. town clerk Ellen Cushman. Yeah, she did a wonderful job, and it was a blast. Um, you know, there's a the winner, food by the way was then, fantastic. <laughs> yes, we had food from Sophia's Greek food. pantry. It, was it was did incredible. run out of wine though, so make sure you have enough wine. <laughs> yeah, that was my fault. I didn't didn't, didn't suspect expect so did. many drinkers <laughs> yeah. in Belmont. I know my mistake. <laughs> Don't worry, this year that won't happen again. There'll be plenty of food and wine, and it is going to be in the same venue, the mm. Beach Street Center. Um, our stars, you know, they're, they're, as I said, are 10. Only five are confirmed, so it's probably best that I don't get into all their names. But mm -hmm. uh, you were asking, you know, what, how can we top it? I think that each of the dancers really brings, uh, it draws a crowd, their own crowd. And we're going to fill the place for sure, That's you know, great. now that uh, the when signs will go up. When will you start selling tickets? When will oh, tickets start? Um, March. In March, okay. March. Definitely. By the beginning of March, if not earlier, we will definitely have an event bright up and we'll have signs around town so people can, you okay. know, put in their yard. So if anyone's interested in a yard sign, let yeah, us know. Definitely. So. <laughs> now, what do you have coming up in um, December, January, February? Well, in addition, so last night, well, I shouldn't say last night because um, this is going to air at some point in the future. Okay. But <laughs> recently, we had a wonderful um celebratory panel discussion by uh, three activists in the women's movement, one um, author and an activist, and they were, they were amazing just talking about the history of women's clubs, the history of women's rights in America. 
And we've been sticking with that theme. We've been trying to have women-only presenters just to celebrate the anniversary in a very women-centric way. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to continue with that theme in, in uh, 2020. Um, our first two meetings in January are luncheons. And the public is invited. We give food away for free, and it's yeah. always delicious. Um, it's always the second Thursday of the month okay. that we have these meetings that are open to the public. Our speakers, we want to keep a couple of them secret at this point. We'll announce them when we um, confirm who the midday ones are because we have a couple big names we're hoping to get. Like in this fall, we, in, during the fall, we had Joan Vernocki from the Boston Globe. We she had, was great. She was awesome. Barbara Berenson, who's a very well-known author who recently wrote a book about not just um, the suffrage movement, but the history of Massachusetts in the suffrage movement. Oh, Most people don't know how important Massachusetts was in suffrage. And you know, we want to keep emphasizing and connecting the dots between the, the 1920 as the year we became formed as an organization, that also was the year women won the right to vote. And our creation, mm -hmm. the creation of our club as an organization coinciding with the year women won the right to vote was not an accident. <laughs> it was actually an important celebration of women becoming enfranchised as citizens for the first time in our nation's history. And we're going to continue with that theme throughout January, February. And we meet literally through May. So we're going to continue to have events up through May. And then yeah. we take the summer off. And when we come back in the fall, we'll continue to have some celebratory um, events because uh, 2020 is still going to be here that's in the right. fall. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, for anyone that's thinking about joining, what would you tell them? Why should someone join? Well, Maria, you're new, so. I'm new. And, you can still um, answer that. Why you know, did you join? Why did I join? Initially, uh, you know, it started out, um, you know, the people that I knew were involved with the club, started sort of as a socialite, well, the truth be mm -hmm. known. But what I find is it's a wonderful privilege to be a member of the Belmont Women's Club because you get to, uh, on a regular basis, work and socialize with, you know, many generations of incredible women. Um, it, you know, we may be all in the same generation, but there are so many generations of women in that club and it's every time you meet somebody new it's amazing what you you know the relationship you create and I I have found personally that that's been you know a wonderful thing and all, all of the you know socializing and working together is all for the same purpose with the purpose of preserving the Homer house you know the yeah. historical Homer house. And we're all very different we're a very diverse group we mm -hmm. disagree about everything but <laughs> boy do we manage to still get along and I think that's pretty magical mm -hmm. So what would you say, Wendy, why, why should someone become a member? Since I'm an academic and an activist <laughs> oriented around women's rights, there's nothing better for me. This is like, you know, manna from heaven for me to have women mobilizing together, working together, being together. Don't forget men too. Yes, yes. <laughs> and I love my men. men. Too. I love our men. But Who do we have the as notion men again? Of, is it Mark Palillo still? Mm -hmm. Mark Palillo, oh. Sammy Baghdadi, yeah. uh, Adam Dash, Will Brownsberger. Mm -hmm. Am I leaving anybody out? We have a bunch of men, yeah. but, but it's still important to remember our history as a club of women, that the purpose of being together <laughs> is oriented around issues that women care about. The men we have involved care about women's issues, which is important. And you know, as an activist who cares about women's rights and violence against women and abused women and so forth, there's nothing better than having that network of people you can trust, rely on, talk to, pick up the phone, we are there for each other. It's That's like nice. a big That's sandbox, nice. right, <laughs> that we yeah. all function in and play in. It's wonderful. I have one final question. Is there ever a, a chance that you could lose the house, that the house would have to get sold or turned over to the town? Is there ever that possibility? No, um, and I know Wendy will give the legal end of this, but my understanding uh, is that it can't happen. Um, and I don't foresee it even coming close to ever needing to happen, especially now that with all the renovations that are, have been done and are planned to be done. So, But I, Wendy should tell us the, the legal reasons behind mm -hmm. all of that. Well, if the question is, can the house legally be sold ever? Of course the answer is yes. We own it, we bought it, we can sell it. But we donated the land to a land trust a long time ago. That makes it a lot harder to sell the house. You have to sell a house without the land or you have to get the land trust involved. And um, you know, if I were them, I wouldn't approve it. And, and we did that on purpose. We want to conserve the house. We want to conserve the land. Donating the land to the land trust, the public land trust, was our way of saying we have no plans of ever good. making money That's off of good. this or selling this and so forth. 
And we wouldn't be working as hard as we are to grow the club, to maintain the house, if we had any plans to sell it. It's just not on the, not on the horizon at all. Right. Not, and it will never be sold so long as I'm involved. Well, and that's going to be a while because we're not letting you. her go. <laughs> <laughs> I want to no, thank you both <laughs> for coming on the show. Yes, Wendy, you are definitely a new energy for this club, and it's great to have you mm -hmm. as, as a cool president. Well, thanks for having us. And uh, I want to thank you for coming on the show. I want to thank everyone for tuning in to learn more about the Belmont Women's Club. They do have a website. What is the website, ladies? BelmontWomensClub.org. BelmontWomensClub.org. Go to the website. Um, they have a Facebook page as well, which I believe is also Belmont Women's Club. Yep, managed by Julia Jenkins. She's awesome. So I'm going to buzz off for now, and until next time. <laughs>